In Jesus' name we pray. Divine Father, we are grateful because there is benefit in believing in you. Faith in God produces great treasures for God's children. A divine, I'm asking that the eyes of your children will be open. They will take advantage of your invitation to believe in you. Their faith will become alive. And they will enjoy the privilege of sonship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. I want to read Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he shall say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, Wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. The Lord is sending the world of comfort, of assurance to you, his child, his daughter. And that is you will live. You are going to survive. You will make progress. Amen. Take the promise God has given you. Write it out. Write out that promise God made to you. That vision, revelation, true dream that God has given you, write it down. He said, make it plain. So plain that a person running can still read it. So bold. That he that run it may read it. A person running can still make it. Meaning, make it very plain. And what is it? That which the Lord has said shall come to pass. Amen. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. That 
which the Lord has said requires his own time. Although to you it is delaying. It is delaying. He is saying there is the time it shall come to pass. At the end it shall speak. At the end that thing will appear as God said. It's like that. At the end it shall speak and not lie. So don't doubt it. Don't doubt what God has said. It may look very complex. It may look too great to be real. Too great to be real. Write it down. Amen? Amen. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. That is where faith becomes important. The just shall live by his faith. How many will be able to wait for it? How many sisters will believe God that they will have a husband from God and will wait for when that husband will come? How many brothers will believe that they will have a wife from the Lord and wait for when that woman shall come forth? It will take faith. That's why the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. The Lord wants you to know this word will surely be fulfilled. If he has made any promise for you, that promise will surely come. That is why you should not be doubting. The problem is that of faith. How will you be able to believe it shall still happen? Will you be ready to believe that although the thing is as it, it is now, it will still work? Sarah, will you really be unshaken in your faith that you are still going to give birth to a child? Because the Lord has already said it was not going to be true, Ishmael. That it was going to be true, Sarah. That a child would be born. God had made that promise long. Sarah, will you still believe that it shall happen. Some people will shake and laugh. I am old now. The circumstance has gone beyond control. Can my Lord, who is old now, be able to have any power? So, the Lord is saying, though it tarry, wait for it. That is where you need faith. You need faith. Not, you know, Sarah made that mistake. You remember the mistake of Sarah? The mistake of Sarah was she started shaking. It was that shaking that gave her the problem. It was the shaking that brought out personal wisdom and brought out misconnection. Okay, you know, I'm old now. Can you take Hagar and go into her and see what the Lord can do? All right. Okay, let her come. Flesh comes into it. 
you see flesh comes in when you think that it may not happen again and you begin to make your connection a connection you will regret throughout life a connection that will require grace even to require grace otherwise you're going to heaven may not even work again can you see that the just shall live by his faith though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry behold the soul that is confused the soul that is worried the soul that is anxious the soul that is lifted up is not upright in him if you go into doubting go into this worldliness you are no more just and the qualification that will give you these things is being just but if you go into anxiety into worry into this you are falling away you are no more just and you are depriving yourself of the qualification of this of getting your blessing but the just shall live by his faith if you will continue in the way of God without shaking if you will continue to believe God without worrying if you will continue to live righteous the blessings of God are coming upon your life that which promise shall be ye and amen on you in Jesus name in the book of Romans chapter 1 Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believed to the Jew first and also to the Greek this salvation manifested in the, among the Jews and also is manifesting among the Gentiles people that were, are not Jews to the Jews and also to the Greeks for therein in this gospel is the righteousness of God revealed. The goodness of God is manifested. The power of God is manifested, demonstrated. The blessings of God are being poured forth. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith it comes through believing through staying with God trusting in him and believing in him it comes from faith to faith it means you need faith for this after you have worked on this it has opened up for you the next you still need faith for the other one. It's like the kingdom of God is a building having many rooms stored up with many blessings in life. Each room has a door and a lock. You come to this room because you want something there but it is locked up you have to open it because it has its own key you use its key and open it and have access to that thing after you finish there's another thing you need it is also having its own lock and key you go there take the key open it enter in and get access to those things then there's another door then there's another door then there's another door what is said is 
the treasures of God are stored up for us, it will take faith to unlock them. You needed faith to be sanctified. As a believer, you will need faith to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. You will need faith to trust in God to help you do your restitutions. You need faith for healing. You are sick. You need faith to come to God to unlock healing door so you can be healed. You need faith to come to God for prosperity. Therein, the righteousness of God the goodness of God are being manifested from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Because every day you need the blessing of God. Every day you need the touch of God. Every day you want God to do this thing or the, or the other thing. So how do you get God to do that? Faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, let me talk to you about being just. The just. Everybody say it. Because. Say it again. Because. Say it the third time. Because. The just, being just, being righteous is a costly thing. Very costly. It's not everybody that can be just. So this faith life is only for the just. Faith to receive the blessings of God. As for faith for salvation, everybody believe in Christ and be saved. Then have access to all the blessings of God. It, as you remain just, you are to get blessings from God. But to be just, let's have understanding about it. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 to 11. Genesis chapter 6. Let's read from verse 8 downward. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The eight also was corrupt before God. And the eight was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. But as for Noah, you have found grace in my side. I want you to understand the cost of being just. The value of being just. The placement of the just. The just is the righteous man. In a family where all are sinners, he is different. She is different. Living righteously before God. In an institution where all are sinners, she is different. He is different. Living in the fear of God. In a society where people are given to corruption, he is different. Living in the love of God, in obedience to the word of God, a just man. 
see how God was pleased with Noah. He said, all flesh has corrupted before me or have corrupted before me. It is you I have found righteous. You maintain righteousness. Since you knew me, you did not go back to the world by temptation or by or any other means that slay people down. You never gave in to those things. You remained with me. Corrupt way of getting money came. You rejected it. Corrupt way of exalting yourself came on you. You rejected it. Corrupt way of what fleshly enjoyment in the pleasure of the man, the pleasure of the woman. You rejected this thing. Because you love me. Because you want to walk with me. You never allowed yourself to tell lies. You never allowed yourself to go angry and be spoiling things. You never allow yourself to, to be rude and wicked. You were able to control yourself even at challenges of people. You were able to humble yourself even as they despised you. You were able to control yourself. You never got angry and walk away. I didn't see murmuring in your mouth. I'm talking about the just. I'm talking about the just. Because all these things that are happening to you, an angel was by you taking record. Angel was by you taking record. The interest of God was you, not Satan. Was you, not Satan's children. Was you, not the unfaithful, not backsliders. The interest of God was on you. When those things were happening, the Lord was watching you. He said, Noah, you I have seen just. You have walked with me perfect. Now, Noah, I have made provisions for your life. All through your life. I have made sufficient provision for your survival. Because of how much you have given yourself to me. How much you have invested in me. I have made provision. I have made provision for you. Provision for your health. Provision for your safety. Provision for your protection. Provision for your preservation. Provision for your fruitfulness. Provision for your promotion. Provision for the desires of your heart. I have made all things that pertain to life and godliness ready for you. Why? You are just. You are just. You have escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. You have escaped it. Therefore, I, your God, the rewarder, have made reward ready. You shall be rewarded. Amen. Therefore, Noah, in every matter, take it from me. I told you, I have made provision for your safety. Don't fear. Just believe me. Always look to me. Inquire from me. Ask me to do it. Tell me what's your problem. And believe that I will self it because I told you. And just be rest assured whatever is the challenge. Noah, I have made provision for all the darknesses of your life to be turned to light. So anytime you see darkness, know that light will follow. If you just see darkness, wait. 
it shall soon change to light. The just shall live by faith. Praise the Lord. It's just like a student was walking to school a far distance early in the morning and said, ah, where are you in the house? You're supposed to be going. Come, let's go to school. He said, my father has arranged for vehicle for me. Yes, your father has arranged for you. You are going to live. You are going to survive. You are going to be healed. You are going to make progress. The promise will be fulfilled in your life. The just shall live by believing in God because he values your righteousness. Are you telling are you understanding? God values your righteousness. God is happy that you have given him righteousness. He will pay you for that which you have given him. And what you have given him is a pearl of great price. It's not easily found in the world. Where will God find them? Where will God find righteousness now? Where will God find somebody unwavering? Where will God find somebody that can still stand strong despite satanic roaring? Where will God find someone that with this cheap immorality that is passing by and the person will still say no? Where will God find those people? And he came to find you. Where will God find people that dating money they are not interested in, they cannot touch it? Where will God find people whose lips are not telling lies? Where will he find them? To find them in you. You are a special person. <laughs> I say you are a special person. That's why he is informing you. You will live. Only believe your God. Trust in your God. The just shall live by faith. Now, if this is so, it is like that. Why do we have sinners who say we are faith? We are faith people. Our church is given to faith. Can faith work without righteousness? Can God also pre pre prepare these things for sinners? Can God prepare His storehouse of blessing for sinners? Those faith they are talking about is not faith from God. Because sinners cannot enjoy this. Where were those people that lived in the co contemporary time of, with uh, Noah? If God's blessing is for all people, if sinners should also enjoy the blessings of God, where are they? Where are they? They died. Blessings of faith is not for sinners. If you hear any people saying, we are for faith, uh, we are faith, don't do, just leave them alone. They don't even know that what they're saying. God is not there. Although there's general mercy that people can take as the crumbs that fall from the children's table, as the God that causes the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust, that causes the sun to shine upon the just and the unjust. In that case, some people, sinners, some they have to get blessing because of the tomorrow God sees of them. They are, still, they are going to be useful in blessing the children of God, serving the children of God. They are going to be useful in doing some natural thing. Maybe they, will be, they are engineers. They will construct road for children of God to follow through. So God has to give them food and give them water to drink. And because of this, some blessings can come. Are you hearing me? They are going to their drivers that will be driving you to church, and so God has to make provision so that you should have drivers around. In that case, they eat of the crumbs that fall from the children's table. But the original people are you. Yeah. You will live. Yeah. 
the Lord is saying the blessing will surely come. Go back again to that Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. We read verse 2 to verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 4. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Write the vision. What did God tell you? This thing I am saying they are true in my life. Long, long time. In 1986, 1986, I was asking God because of the desire, a great desire in me to be a preacher. I wanted to preach this gospel to serve God. All my life. And the Lord gave me vision. He said, yes, I will use you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to use you. I'm going to, you will do much for me. It was bubbling in my heart. Then I was in a program. In that program, I have shared the thing many times that in that program, the Lord came to me and said, what do you want me to do here in this program for you? I said, God, I want you to confirm my calling. You told me I will be a preacher as it is in me, as you have told me already. You told me about it. So, God, I want to know whether it will be like that. It's okay. Now, what you need to do, keep yourself righteous, keep yourself clean, be careful, your eyes, your mind, your thoughts, everything. Make sure everything is clean. Be just. Be just. Be righteous in all your ways. Uh, that one I will do because I am in for it. Praise the Lord. Then in the course of the program, a man came up, a woman came up and began to speak in tongues. I think we should be about 1,000 in that place began to speak in tongues. It is a university community. And then, after speaking in tongues, a man came up to interpret the tongues. I said, there are about, how many? Ten people here. God has called them out for the minute. They know themselves. And the Lord wants them to come forward so that he can pray for them. Hey, God, you have done this thing. This is wonderful. I came up with some other people came out and we were 10 people in such big congregation. The 11 was the wife of the 10th man who followed her husband. Now, I was so happy. But I still needed more confirmation. Then the Lord gave me this scripture. Isaiah Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 Read from verse 9. From verse 9. Remember the former things of all, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Then verse 11. Can we read verse 11 together? One, two, go. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. When the Lord spoke, it was as if somebody was just talking to me like this. Said, I, that, I gave you that vision. I gave you that calling. And I will do it. I, you know, a ravenous bed. The ravenous bed is just like myself. It's a bed that will not be satisfied. It will eat and wants to eat more. It will eat and wants to eat more. I see it's myself. Because 
we are doing it, but we say, God, this is too small. We are looking for more. We are looking for, we want to do more. We want to do more. God, what again? What, what again? And this promise was given in 1986. So he said, do it, tarry. What should you do? For it shall surely come. At the end, it shall speak and shall not lie. So, the Lord now is telling you, back to that uh, um, Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. The Lord is telling you in the same way, believe that your God. He says, and the Lord answered me, and said, write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. As you read it, let it direct your path. As you read that vision, as you set your eyes on that vision, let it hasten you to prepare and know that it shall surely come to pass. And he says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Is my own speaking? Yes. Is my own speaking? Yes. There are still more scriptures. I'm waiting for them. They will be passing like this. He spoke them years to pass. Years past rather. He spoke them long. I'm saying this thing because the Lord has spoken to you. The Lord has given you a promise. He has given you a revelation. The Lord gave Joseph a dream. Did he come to pass? And Joseph remembered his dream. And Joseph remembered his dream. Write your dream. Make it plain like this. Praise the Lord. Though it tarry, wait for it. Faith. Let nothing affect your faith. That this thing will happen. This thing will work. Yes. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it shall surely come. Because it shall surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, he that is in haste, he that is worried, he that is confused, he that is proud, he that is guiding himself by himself is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. Praise the Lord. That's what God wants you to know. Yes. The scripture under consideration speaks about personal faith of the just man. You have escaped that breach of sin. You have come over to the place where here is God. Here is his abundance you can possess. And faith is required. Remember, faith is the key that opens all doors. The doors to your blessing. Yes. The just man should always exercise faith in God. Trusting that in every situation of life, the Lord will serve him. The Lord will bring him out. Yes. God is interested for you to believe personally. Don't be always relying on another. Woman, not always on your, on your husband. Children, yes, my mother gave. But God wants you to know you have. You have a father in heaven. My father, my father, my father will give me good. Your father should give you. But trust God too. So it will increase what God will give your father. Amen. Amen. Or if you work it out simply, he can do. So learn to trust God. Let everybody learn to believe God. If you have been made righteous. The children of Israel were children of covenant. When the serpent came among them and beat them, 
the Lord's instruction was, each one of them should look to the serpent-like image constructed and hung on a pole. If, if whoever was beaten by a serpent should look at it and if he did so, he got healed. Is that so? So God wants you to do this thing personally. Personally trust in God. Have faith in God over your situation. Fear, lacks, pain, whatever. Personally. Because you are a child and this is reward for children. It's reward. They are for you. Son, you have been with me in the house and all that I have, I die. That's what the Lord was speaking to the, the elder brother of the prodigal son. You, just, what all is yours? Faith. Exercise faith in God in every matter. Use that key of faith. It shall open the door. Praise the Lord. That is it. The just shall live by faith. This is both an exhortation and an assurance. God is exhorting you. Make use of your faith. Confidence in me. You will see that matter go. The wild wind that is blowing like this, that is coming in your direction, stand still. It will pass. Amen. You will live. Amen. Your journey will continue. Amen. That sickness that is choking everywhere, piercing everywhere, stand still by faith in your God. It will cease eventually. Amen. You will live. Amen. You will make progress. Amen. That's what God wants you to know. God is saying you should trust him and be peaceful. Whatever opposition is mounting against you, whatever obstacle is obstructing your way, whoever is molesting your life and is instilling fear in you, what is God saying? Have faith in me. Know that I am around. Amen. Amen. Know that I am around. Have faith in me. In the face of daunting challenges, you shall live and overcome. Brother, sister, have faith in God. In spite of the great opposition you are facing, and you shall live. There is no food, food will come. I say, What? I say what? Food will come. God is wonderful. Let me tell you a story. There was a minister that dedicated to his work, a preaching work, faithful to God, a just man. But there was no food to eat in a particular period. And the wife was a serious woman. The wife told the husband, we need to eat her. We need to eat. Well, just there be food. The man prayed to his God and the Lord says, food is coming. <laughs> so, he told the wife, don't worry, my wife. Food is coming. Everybody say, food is coming. Food is coming. It was in the night. So, the woman now said, okay, I need the food very early tomorrow morning. So as to begin cooking, get good breakfast, get everything ready. But to the woman, she didn't believe in God. The man believed in God. 
I am saying this, believe in your God. So when the man was sleeping, the woman wanted to mock this man. Who is just this man is just making use of mere words to tell me that food is coming. What type of food? The woman had told him that he needed the, the tie, okay, the tie of a pig. So she is part of her demand. So when the man was sleeping, the woman went to wake him up. Wake up, wake up. Dog is carrying that 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 meat now. Dog is carrying wake up, pursue. The man woke up and said, which type of which woman is this? He, he, went, he went to his normal prayer. God, see what my wife is doing. He said, don't worry. I said, food is coming. Amen? Amen? So, very early in the morning, the wife went to prepare the fire. My husband said, food is coming now. I want to disprove him that all this faith doesn't work. I said, I need something practical. He's trying to use the bare language for me. The, the man, the woman went and prepared, I set the fire. As she finished setting the fire, she came now to the husband. Okay, where is the food? And right at that time, somebody was knocking at the door. So as they opened the door, the man was coming with a wheelbarrow full of different kinds of food. And with the tie of a pig, the one he she wants, ham. Immediately the woman saw it, she fell down, bruv, have mercy. Pray for me, I am dying. Praise the Lord. Your circumstance will change. They are laughing at you, but have faith in God. Amen. Things will take a different shape. Amen. You are a Christian already. If you were a sinner, you would have been bothering who? When, how will you repent now? How do you stop sins and enroll as a child of God? But you have stopped your sins. You have, been in, you have enrolled and have become a child of God. You are following this God, this Jesus, with the whole of your heart. I tell you, God has made provisions of life for you. Yeah. You will live. Yeah. That's the word of God. Yes. A man came to Jesus and asked him to come to his house to help him because of his daughter's ill health. Jesus delayed in coming and a message was sent to this man not to trouble Jesus anymore because the daughter had died. Matter is finished now. The matter is finished. What else? What will Jesus do? Some people don't know the power of God. They don't know that God goes, God goes beyond the limit of your thought. To him that is able to do. Exceeding abundance above what we ask or think that's God who told you that the matter is late now who told you you have gone too late and the matter cannot happen anymore that the blessing will not come again so they told him don't trouble the Lord anymore Jesus heard the bad news and encouraged him be not afraid only believe. Don't be afraid. This is God now telling you. It's your turn. I say it is your turn. You say the matter is past. Reverse it. Be not afraid. Only believe. That's what Jesus is saying. The just shall live by faith. That is what Jesus is saying to you. Whatever is confronting you, be not afraid. Only believe. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. When Lazarus was 
in the grave four days even stinking Jesus said take roll away the stone and uh, is it Mary or Martha said Lord this time it is he's thinking he turned and said did I not say unto you if you can believe you will see the glory of God I am putting this thing direct into your heart that if you will believe in that matter in that situation you will praise God in your life That's what God is saying. You are a child of God. You, I and my children, we are for signs and wonders. Jesus is saying, I and my children. Who is among the children of Jesus? <laughs> then we are for signs and wonders in this world. The Lord will do your own. He will do my own. Amen. He will do her own. Amen. He will do his own. Amen. That is the whole matter. That's what God wants you to know. Only believe. You will overcome that problem and laugh at the devil. Amen. If a just man falls inside water and appears to be drowning, if he can believe God, he will float on the surface of the water. He will be rescued. That's God. We are going to give you reasons why we are saying this. Yeah. This message is to the just man and the just woman. The faith of the just will make him over, overcome in this life. Life is a warfare. It is always a settled matter that the force of light will eventually prevail. It is a settled matter. As you enter a dark room, just release your light, your touch light. You won't trace that darkness there again. Because it is a concluded matter. Light overcomes darkness. Righteousness overcomes the devil. Hallelujah. A head of the battle is already a settled matter. That the force of light will prevail. The winning secret is the righteousness of the saint. God values that righteousness. Others are abusing him. Others are even taunting him. Others are mocking him. Others say, is there knowledge in the most high? Is there, on the, is there understanding in the almighty? What can I benefit from him? That's what they're saying. They have no respect for him. But you are an obedient child. You have left sin and evil. You don't speak like they speak. Tell me yourself. When the, the thief on the left hand side of Jesus was jeering at him. I said, if you are God. If you are the son of God. Cast, save, save yourself and save us. He joined the other people to mock at Jesus. And the one in the right hand side said, ah, Don't you fear God? We are here condemned because of our evil works. But he condemned of in his righteousness. That statement touched the heart of Jesus. Jesus didn't leave that man on the cross. The man said, Lord, remember me. He turned to Jesus. Lord, remember me. When thou comest unto thy father's kingdom. That turning to Jesus is faith. And Jesus, a man like that, you will neglect him. 
Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Because of your righteousness, God says in this world, he has planned your life. You will live. You will be great. You will be delivered. You will win. Yes. That is what you need to know. What is this faith? Faith is complete confidence in God and in his world. It is complete reliance on God's promises. It is walking and living according to the instructions of God. Even though you cannot see him, the just stands and leans on God. He relies on God. He trusts in God. That is the bedrock of his faith. Now, in Acts chapter 27, verse 23 to 25, Acts 27, verse 23 to 25, the scripture says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sell with thee. Verse 25, everybody, are you there? Can you see the vision is yet for an appointed time? When this ship was moving like this, an angel had already told me that Paul, you are seeing problem now. Yes, the problem will be there, but you will not die. Amen. And because of you, God has sent me to tell you that everybody here is protected. So, Paul was just watching the problem. It problem was moving like this. It was moving like this. It was moving like this. It was moving like this. Problem was still there. But the word has been released. And faith is believing the word of God. Believing the promise of God. The problem was still there, but you believe. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. So, the problem was still there. The problem was still there. The problem was still there. Until the people were no more eating food. One time now, it was time. Because they needed these words. Because something was to happen. Negatively. If Paul didn't give them the word of faith. Sirs, yes, I had given advice before, but you people didn't take this advice. We would have solved this problem. All together, don't worry. Be of good cheer. An angel of my God came to me, the God that I serve. Are you just? This is just man speaking. Just man, just woman. Your God has sent me to promote you. An angel of God, which I whom I saw, came to me and said, Fear not, Paul, you will surely appear before Caesar. The devil doesn't want you to go there so that the gospel should just perish on the way. There, you are still going to write many books there as you're going, many books shall be written. That shall form a everlasting book, the word of God. So, you are surely going to appear before Caesar. 
And God has given to you all that sell with you. So, be of good cheer. For I believe God. If others will not believe, believe. But by your believing, others will be encouraged to believe. I believe God. That it shall be even as it was told me. Simple. And I'm sure God told you something. God told you something. Believe God. It shall be even as God has told you. Hallelujah. As an evidence of his faith, there's something Paul did. After he had spoken to them, he started eating his food. And the people also began to eat. Amen? Amen. The Lord has told you that you shall be well. <laughs> Please, eat food. Well, for all this while, I think about 14 days, we have been without food. So please eat. He carried his own and started eating. I was very peaceful. They look at his face. He was peaceful. Maybe he was singing one of the choruses. <laughs> the people say, uh, this man is true. He's not faking this matter. They started eating. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And this is the same Paul that say you are witness, witnesses and God also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. This faith goes with righteousness and holiness. All these ones that say we are people of faith and are sinners, forget that. A woman in trousers say I believe God. Forget her. You hear me? Forget her. A liar will come and say, I believe God. You believe who? The God of liars? It's, it goes with righteousness. It tells us why some people say they believe God and God disappoints them. You are not righteous. Go to Noah, the one I saved from destruction. He was a just man. See Paul here telling you the secret. Righteousness and holiness. Come to that level. The Lord will spend on you. He will spend on you. Apostle Paul could boldly and confidently declare the blessings of God would be so in his life because he was a just man. As a just man, he would live in whatever situation and circumstance of life. Paul said he believed God with unwavering and unshakable faith that what God had told him would surely come to pass. As long as it was God that said it, the matter was settled. The matter was settled. Has God spoken concerning any area of your life? As long as it is God, move forward with confidence even if the situation seems contrary. Move forward. Sometimes you are driving a car, you off the engine, but the car is still moving. How long is it going? Will it continue to go like that? <laughs> that problem has been solved. You are still seeing it. It is a car moving with engines off. Are you getting it? The, the ignition is off. It will eventually stop. The matter is gone already. What you are seeing now has no power to continue it. It's just moving to back. Are you hearing me? <laughs> That's how you should believe God. The matter is settled. It's still there. The ignition has been put off. Is just moving to park. Don't jump out. I say, this thing is not stopping. This, I'm jumping out now. Uh -uh. Remember, the engine is off. The thing is just moving to park and you're jumping out. You are not a just person. <laughs> I 
Let them be peaceful. Your God has set it. Your God has quenched the engine of that matter. It will end up. Amen. Hallelujah. Just be worshipping him like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. It is just settled. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Because of God's love for the just, he will not allow the challenges of life to overwhelm him. To the just man, God has made a, has said something. In Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. Can you see your God? It's everlasting. This righteousness you chose, you have chosen a good thing. Because you have entered into the hand of the everlasting God. The God of love, the God of kindness, the God of mercy, and he said, I will love you with a forever love. Because you have come to me. You have come to me. I will love you forever. Say to yourself, God will love me forever. Say it again. Say it the third time. God me Simple. Let that sentence keep on ringing in your heart. He loves you. His eye is upon you. He will care for you. He will preserve your ways. Yes. The just man is a child the father can never forsake. The father can never throw him into the wilderness of life and abandon him there. No. He can never leave him in the drowning, drowning ocean or ab and, and abandon him. No, he can never put him, leave him in the darkness and abandon him. No. The father loves him. Yes. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you don't have too much now, don't bother about it. Be peaceful. He is coming. Paul said, I have learned how to manage small. I have also learned how to manage much. That's God. Sometimes he gives it small. Sometimes he gives it big. You know, there was rain some few days ago. Heavy rain. And there has been no rain now for some days now. Is that so? What if that rain continued up to today? Would have gone back to the days of Noah. <laughs> Is that not so? God knows how to control things. So if he gives you small, don't, hey, I want one more, I want more. I, how do I, how do I? Mm -mm. You want to spoil your, your character before God. You want to spoil your image. 
Is he not aware? They still don't know that it's small that came. Let your manner of life be without covetousness. I want, I want, I want. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Verse 6. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear. What shall man do unto me? Bold in life because you're specially loved. The just man knows that the father loves, cherishes, and cares for him. That is the confidence of the just man, the righteous man. The holy man. That is what motivates him to face all adversities of life without giving up. My God will help me. My God will come for me. If you cast us into this fire, our God will deliver us. <laughs> now, listen. They went to meet the king and said, King Darius, sign a decree that in the space of 30 days, if anybody prayed to any other God beside you, what should happen to him? They should throw him into the lion's dens. They were talking and looking at who? Just Daniel. Just Daniel. When they finished talking, Daniel needed to go and report their ways to God. So he went back to prayer. The same prayer they said, if any man would, be do, would do, he would be cast into the den of lions. Daniel went to, in fact, he opened his windows and, he, and faced Jerusalem as in usual and prayed. What was he telling God? All the lions shut up their mouth. I will be coming there. <laughs> you, you understand? God, all the lions shut up their mouth. King Darius shall not sleep today because I am going to the den of the lions. He shall see me there tomorrow morning. God, all these wicked people, immediately I come out from the den of the lions. Let them replace me there. Daniel settled everything in prayer. Amen? Amen. They now, see, see, he is praying. See, he is praying. They didn't know it's a dangerous man they were pointing to. A just man like you. If a witch points to you, he's pointing to a dangerous person. I'm telling you the truth. Are you hearing? <laughs> it's a dangerous hand because matters have been settled. God has numbered the hair of the just man and said none shall fall to the ground without the father knowing. And he said because I have loved you I will give nations for you. So who is this man pursuing you? He should be careful. He will go for you. Amen. You are too precious to leave this earth without your time. All these things you are doing for Jesus. If you don't know how. Can Satan replace what you are doing now? How much less a child of Satan? Just man. God saved you. You are obedient to God. He will reward you. Amen. And if this reward is great like this on earth. Wait until you enter heaven. That one, we will tell it, we shall understand it better by and by. The just shall live by faith. So, the just is confident in his heavenly father. 
He knows he will arise in love and compassion to deliver him. That is the confidence of the just man. That is what motivates the just man to face all adversities of life without giving up. He is not afraid of the roaring of the lions because he knows his loving father is always there for him. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with him. Amen. The blessings of his life, of the work he does for God, shall follow him. Amen. The reward of his service shall be given to him. Amen. The eye of the Lord moved to and fro, beholding the perfect upon the earth, the just man, and the just shall live by faith. Rise up upon your feet and worship him. You will live. The just. You will live. You will come out of the curve. You will come out of darkness. You will be promoted. The just shall live. You will get your desire granted. Just believe God. Stand st still and see the Lord with you. The Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall again see them no more forever. Your God shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Wonderful to be a righteous man. Pray that God will keep you in righteousness. just shall leave the eyes of your God are upon you. He appreciates your righteousness. He appreciates your commitment. You will live. The promises of God shall be answered over you. Confess your sins. Cleanse yourself from your backsliding and be restored back to righteousness. Great is the reward of righteousness. Confess your sins and be a just man. Clean up where you have fallen. Plead with God to restore you. Ask God to forgive your sins and make you a just man. The reward is great. The just shall triumph. Jesus name we pray just raise up your hand I just bless your life because he says you're going to be you're going to come out of it he says you will win he says that which he spoke to you shall come to pass 
the vision the Lord has given to you, he said, at the end he shall speak. Believe God. Do you believe? Do you believe? Almighty Father, your children have believed. And let faith get into action in their lives. All your promises, release upon them. Let those promises begin to work out now. Let those promises get fulfilled in their lives. In the name of Jesus. God, the provision. God, the power. The victory that you have promised them. That overcoming power that you have promised them. Let it come to pass in Jesus' name. Almighty Father, let the healing that you have promised them. You have promised her, you have promised him that by the stripes of Jesus she is healed. She, she, he is healed. I declare it. Let it walk now in their life in Jesus' name. You say, the desire of the heart, you will grant it. You have made that promise. I'm therefore praying that which they desire. I don't know what it is, but you know, grant it in Jesus' name. Ha! Ah, the blessing has come. Receive your blessing. Receive your blessing. Receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. You Lord. are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. Lord. Oh, you are the living Savior. I believe, I believe, I believe.